even got a chance to tell Brother Doe or Brother Jim to sing this. Uh, hallelujah. So here it is, brother. Yeah. Oh, aren't you glad you're not up here? Uh, but I know that he can do it. He wrote this song. It's been a while since he sung it. But this might be where you're at. And this might be the song that you need to hear. Hallelujah. Come and rescue me. Sometimes I feel so far away I struggle over day I'm feeling like a prodigal son Going my own way But there's something deep inside That finds me when I try to hide It stirs me and makes Closer. 
pray that right now. you that he's forgot about yeah. you. Yeah. So when he's drawing, mm. run right after yeah. him. Yes. Yeah. I don't quite understand that, somebody might think. Which well, like when the old prophet Elijah mm. just simply walked by the young prophet Elisha okay. plowing mm. twelve yoke of oxen and he just simply draped his mantle over him. He moved on. The Bible said Elisha ran after him. Man. Come on, somebody. When Jesus in the New Testament, see, I do all this because I got no notes tonight. Amen. I said, when Jesus in the New Testament walked by that fishing boat and said, Follow me, and I'll just make you fishers of men, they ran after him. That tax collector, all the people that he summoned. He summoned you. He summoned every every person born again. It's because you were summoned. Yes. Yes. He called to you maybe in a midnight hour. Maybe in your drunken stupor. Yes. Maybe when you found no one around to even talk to. Yes. He came to you and he summoned you. Yes. Yes, sir. And if you ran after him and just said, yes, Lord. Yes. But by doing that, you've got to surrender your identity. Yes, Come on. You, you, you got to you got to push aside your dominating factor and just say, here I am, Lord. Yes, Come on, somebody. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise. All glory to God. Things seem. When the Lord moves. Amen. Mark chapter number 11. I sense his presence in this house. Yes. I, I, I'm really not going to start reading into verse number 12, but Mark 11, I love this caption over verse number 1, the triumphal entry. Mm -hmm. It's when Jesus now, winding down his earthly ministry, and he set his face towards Jerusalem. There will be quickly coming a crucifixion. A burial and a resurrection. Yes. Yes. But he had told two of his disciples, and I, I'm not going to read it, it, it. 
but you can follow along with it. Mark 11, they told a couple of his disciples to go. Now, you, you're going to find a colt, a donkey that's never been rode. And it's going to be tied in a place where two ways meet. I want you to unloose him and, and bring him to me. And if the owner asks you, what are you doing with that animal? You tell him, the Lord's got need of him. And he's going to let him go when you bring him to me. Jesus would eventually mount this little, can I say it like this little virgin donkey that's never been rode. And they're going to cast their garments upon him. Jesus is going to sit on him. And he's going to start his ascent into Jerusalem. And, and uh, they're going to cast their garments down and they're going to say all manners of praise and worship to him. And it's a triumphal entry. He's moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said he's moving. Yeah. So when the Lord moved, you begin to, the scriptures would just unfold and so much that, that you saw. And I, I, I guess the, one of the greatest top three messages that I feel like God's ever given me was entitled who tied the coat? You know who untied it, too, but who tied it? And I mean, I, I preached it once here. I, I think it's just, uh, I'm telling you, it, it's one of them, it's when it premieres. Every word that God's ever given me is a premiere, but that's just a double premiere. You know? I, I, I said, because you see, somebody tied that coat and they've done their part for the gospel. Yeah. 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 They're unnamed, they're not mentioned, but they've done their part. Yes. To prepare the ongoing of Jesus' ministry. Yes. Yes. I'm not preaching that, but when the Lord, when you, you see these things when the Lord moves. Yes. And he, he gets to a place, and let's read, because some of you are ready to sit down. And verse number 12. No, no, 11. Let's, let's start. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things. And now the evening tide was coming. He went out into Bethany with the twelve. He's moving. Mm -hmm. And on the morrow when they were come to Bethany or from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came. He's moving. If happily he might find anything thereon and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee henceforth or hence after forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to, I said he's moving. Yes. They come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and begun to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And as he talked, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made, come on, so identify thieves. The scribes and the chief priest heard it and saw how they might destroy him for they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine and when evening was come, he went out. I said, uh -huh. yeah. he's moving. Yeah. And he went out of the city. Father, we give you praise and glory. We thank you. The Spirit of the Lord, we sense in his presence this place tonight, oh God, and I pray, hide me behind your cross tonight and speak to these lips that you've created into the hearts and to the ears, oh God, to the beings of your people that's gathered here. Touch those that's sick, touch those that's not able to be here tonight, God, as we're careful to give you the praise and the glory. We ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name, and somebody would shout amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise as you receive it. morning they, they passed by and they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So he, he, he's moving. 
How many times now in your life, when you, when you have been in a move of God, when you, when you sensed and knew that God was moving in your life, there was always something He showed you. Amen. A, certain things that He wanted to bless you with, certain things He wanted to deliver you from. Yes. Come on, don't get tight on me now. But God will never, ever pass you in a spiritual test unless you make the grade. Yes, sir. They passed me through a few grades. A amen. I think some of them old boys went to school with just because they were so mean they were ready to get them out. A amen. But God don't do these things. God will never bless you until you respond in obedience. Yes, sir. Not sacrifice, no. but obedience. Yes. Because, because the, the prophet said obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. But it's obedience that will cause the sacrifice. Yes, sir. When, the, when the Holy Ghost convicts you of what you were doing and you knew it wasn't some preacher just because he preached it or it wasn't because mama told you y'all to lay it down or quit it, but it's, it was a divine, amen, presence. Uh, yeah. uh, he was moving in your life uh, and you realized the only way to please him uh, because you've been praying to please him, right? Uh, the only way you can please him uh, and the only way he would accept it is you simply obey and lay it down and we find out here that he uh, comes to a fig tree. Another premier message entitled Nothing But Leaves. Another time. But tonight the Lord's moving. Mm -hmm. And from a distance he sees a fig tree and it's got leaves. He's hungry. So, by chance, he can be fed. You see, you always want to sit at his supper table and eat from the master's table. But can I tell you that sometimes he sits down and wants us to feed him. Huh? How do we do that? Through praise and worship unto him. Amen. How do we do that? By intimate prayer. For the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And he went on saying he sat there and basking. Amen. When, when his people worships him, he's listening. When somebody gets his attention through fervent prayer, and he's quick. Amen. To, to Show the appearance of fruit. Yeah. But, but the Lord's fixing to move <laughs> for a closer evaluation. Yeah. And when he gets there, he finds nothing but leaves. And this is the most ironic thing about this. And don't feel sorry for the fig tree. But the Bible said it was before the time of figs. But yet when Jesus, he cursed it. He told that tree, he said, you will never bear fruit again. The Bible even says they went out, they went in the town. They come out the next morning and that thing is dried up. The disciples were astonished at how fast this tree had dried up. And I, and I man, I prayed and I looked and saw to the reason, the reason that, that he was he cursed the tree because it gave a false pretense of having something it did not possess. Well, I want to tell you, the church house can get full of them on faith feet trees. When he touches the heart, when he gets close enough to pull back the leaves, he lets us know really quick that we got fruit or we don't. Yeah. Man, man, man. Jesus is, we, we pray for God to move every time, right? Yeah. I don't ever come to church and then say, Lord, don't move tonight. It's a wasted trip if the Lord don't move. Amen. But you've got to understand when he moves, I said, he's coming. He's going to investigate. When, when, my God, I said, when you walk into the temple, into the temple and he saw all the things that was happening in the house of God, he planted a wheel. Glory to God. Watch 
Watch this. He come the day before. The Bible said he looked around. And he left. He went home. To wherever he laid his head that night. That was home. I mean, you got to understand he created the whole thing anyway. <laughs> so anywhere he went could be home. That's right. Even though he didn't have not one, not one place on earth that he had a mailbox and a residency. Because he even told his disciples one time, he said, birds has got nests, foxes has got holes, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Meaning, I don't set up permanent shop here. Why? Because I'm always a moving. For the three years, for the house, he moved with a, with, with a direction from the Father in heaven yes. to a hill called Golgotha. Yes. Come on, somebody. Man. Woo. I said, it's a moving. And future, there's a lot of times, friend. He moves on us and he bears our nakedness. Yes. 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 Fully clothed from the top of the head to the sole of the feet and still feel like you're the naked human. Yeah. You're naked in his presence. Mm -hmm. And you know what we do, don't you? We try to hide. Yeah. We try to hide. We find something. Oh, and just think. That same thing that he cursed. Oh, I feel, I feel a revelation coming on. Oh, the same thing he cursed in the New Testament brought the false sense of, of closure or protection in the Old Testament. Glory to God. When Adam and Eve sinned, they found themselves, amen, hiding. So they got them a big leaf and they tried to make them look, come on a little covering. But Jesus come in the New Testament and he said, oh no, that ain't nothing to leave. I said, I got to depend on the Holy Ghost. I got to ink on that paper. Glory to God. Hey, you see, because, because when, he's, when he's moving, it's up close and personal. Yeah. Yeah. Glory right. to God. Man, I was on the phone the other day, and I stuck my head out the back door. The dog was barking. Hey, and there was something by the tree over there. I said, man, five years ago, I could have told you exactly what it was. I'm not Mr. Magoo now. I'm adjusting the glasses. I can't focus. So I had to move towards you. Come on. Uh, to discern what was in my yard. Uh, amen. Uh, it, was, it was under the oak tree. Uh, but I thought it was a big furry animal. Uh, but it not more than a pine limb uh, that had died. Uh, now, how did a pine limb uh, get under the oak tree? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I'd have never recognized what it was. how many it was, but they didn't move that. They did not break camp until them horns blew. And that cloud began to move. 
you can just jump out there. Oh, man. I want to tell you, there was a place in, in the book of Numbers where they wouldn't move. They wouldn't possess the land. King of Joshua, come back in Mother 10. Amen. They moving away from God. And Caleb and Joshua want to move with God. They come bearing that big old custard grapes between the staffs on their shoulders and say, come on, God says, that's our land. We can get it. Amen. They wouldn't move until after the fact. They decided, well, let's go ahead. We'll go move. And Moses, oh, no, no. No, you better not move now because God, come on, it's past time now. You know how it is when God presses on you and presses on you and presses on you and you're just, you're just as stubborn as an old mule and you won't move. But after a while, he said, you see everybody else will get their blessing. Well, let me go get mine. But God said, no, no, the door is already closed. Oh, come on, somebody. I want to tell you that he walked a little bit close enough. He's an eye shot of that tree and it's under false pretense. He's hungry. He's want somebody to feed him. He gets close and the fruit is not there. I want to tell you, friend, in God, amen, we're living in a season that we can be fruitful even in our droughts. We can have faith and believe God and have a time to take a fruit Season. Somebody here tonight, you might feel like you just as dry. It feels like a August day in the Nebraska cornfield. You just as dry as shucks. And others is man, whoo, everything you touch turns to gold. Come on. Everything just a blessing here and a blessing there. My God, the blessings are chasing me. How come on, somebody? It's seasonal. Glory to God. One week, huh, we can stand up here and testify about what all God's are doing. Huh? Next week, huh, we're like, oh, God, where are you at? God, have you forgot about me? I want to tell you it's seasonal. But let me tell you, even in, the, in your driest times, huh, you should still produce fruit. Yes. 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 I ain't talking about rock. Yes. Fruit. I want to tell you, just going to sit down, but not in my misery, but I'm going to sit down in my trial and I'm going to wait on God. Amen. I'm going to be, I've got my ear, you say that somebody, I've got my ear bent towards heaven. I feel the Holy Ghost nudging me. It's time to get up now. Go to Pharaoh's house and say, let my people go. Come on, somebody. It's time, amen, to walk across enemy lines. I'm not sure, not sure if God is going to be with you to bring you victory, but you can be sure that if God sends me, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Come on. Oh, friend, I want to tell you that he moved towards that temple. I forgot my whip at home. Good thing. Ripta says, good thing. You'd be the first one, son. Huh? I went in and preached at a preacher's conference. There's probably 75 preachers. And the Holy Ghost told me to plant a whip. That's when I, that whip was become a part of my of my. I call it arsenal. That's probably not the right word. <laughs> But planted that wheel. I wanted to preach that preacher's conference. We cleaned we cleaned the temple. Son. You don't know how fearful people get when you crack a whip on that on the side of that pew right there. You're going like that. I said, look, fellas. I wouldn't hit you with it, but Jesus wore them out. <laughs> yes, he did. I said, Jesus, wear us out. Amen. So Jesus did. He went into that temple. you got to understand now. He's in the place of a house of worship. It's supposed to be the house of prayer, right? That's what the scriptures call that temple. Amen. And think about this now. And, and, he, and he went in. Amen. And he began to cast out them that soul. Amen. And bought in the temple. Amen. And I just wonder tonight, what are you willing to sell? Are you willing to sell all the goodness that God has given you? I think there ain't there a song entitled Not for Sale. Yes. Not for Sale. 
this gospel. You don't sell it. I'm going to tell you them pimps and pulpits on some of them religious TV shows. Yeah. Glory to God. That's what's wrong with some people. Amen. They watch all them celebrity uh, people on that on that TV and stuff. Uh, man, I want to tell you they got them so confused and mixed up uh, that if you're not careful, my, I'm telling you, uh, if not careful, we'll fool around uh, like old Esau. We'll sell our soul for one, one, one little five minutes worth of pleasure. And that's soup. <laughs> Jacob says, sell me your birthright. And Esau, being a firstborn, had all the rights of that. Of that. Oh, what, what's it? And this, and watch this. And this is a self-justification. Always happens in the flesh. Well, what's that birthright for? Oh, I said, what's that birthright for? If I'm going to die in a minute because I'm so hungry. Glory to God. Did he not understand that God said a man can fast 40 days and not die? Glory to God. But he couldn't because Esau was a type of the flesh. Glory to God. Well, glory. You mean what Jacob did was, was spiritual? I don't know how spiritual it was, but that's put there for an example. For me and you not to sell our birthright. Hey, you said I was born in Alexander Hospital. I was born in Shreveport or Marshville. No, if you a Christian, you remember exactly where you got born again, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. Got born again in Old Tent Revival. Somebody said got born in Old Brush Harbor. Got born me. I got born in the back of an old Baptist church. Come on, somebody. I knew when I went in one way. I come out the other way. Said they can't understand nothing I say. They said I can't get nothing out of this preaching. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'll take my chances with the Holy Ghost any day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to tickle somebody's ears. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Man, I want to tell you things seen with the Lord knows. Mm. Said he overthrew the tables of money change. You understand, A, they weren't supposed to be doing that kind of business in, in the temple. Right. But B, he overturned it too to expose the fake or counterweights and balances system. Yeah. Kind of like all the taxes we pay today, our dollars just don't go as far. Oh, yeah. But back in those days, they would put extra weights on the scales to always tip. And it took you more and more and more to balance the scales. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He turned them over. Glory, he exposed it. Glory to God. And it sometimes, let us be careful. At least we try to tip the scales in our favor. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Man, but I said he exposed all that. But then he saw, I think, the most grievous thing that he saw. He saw them doves incarcerated, captured in the little pens. Amen. My God. I said he busted all that up and let them doves fly. Hallelujah. You saw when you say it. I said that does been symbolic type of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And people's been trying to capture it and make a profit off of it ever since then. That's they take them in the back room, speak in tongues. They do all the charades and the calisthenics of religion. Glory to God. But I want to tell you, don't say, don't say that they won't try to capture this thing and put it in bondage. And first thing, baby, Jesus, God, they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Glory to God. I know that sounds pretty. And it looks pretty professional in a manger. But they had so tied up, he couldn't move. That's right. Amen. Uh-huh. They've been trying to tie him up ever since. Come on. Yeah. No man could do it. That's why he had to lay his life down on a cross. Yeah. No man could take his life. He said, Legion's angel can come deliver me. I give my life. Yes. Amen. But I want to tell you, now Paul said in the book of Corinthians, we still look at that that temple as some four-cornered building. But Paul says ye are 
ye are the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of God. And you're not careful, the same principle was happening back then. Mm, oh, let me say this. Don't get up, big man, and protect me here in a minute. Hey, I want to tell you, boy, we have some great services. And all of a sudden, some visitors show up. And all of a sudden, we... I don't know why I can worship him like I used to work. Why can't you? I don't care the president or the mayor. The dog catcher. It don't matter who comes to the house of God. You praise God. I think that lady got younger. My God. Every once in a while, sophisticated folks would show up. At that church, it didn't matter to her. The Holy Ghost was a movement. Glory to God. Get drunk. Get a spirit. Get out. church here. Because Jesus is alive. Yes, sir. I proved he's alive. Yes, Come on. Glory to God. Wear him on your neck if you want to. Dead on the cross. He ain't there no more. Amen. That was a one-time sacrifice for the rest of eternity. Yes. Glory to God. For those that are saying, Lord, I'm a moving torch. Yes. Well, right. glory to God. Oh, it says she's, she's a sitting in a house by herself. She's got an issue with a bleeding blood disease for 12 years. And she can't go outside. She can't mingle with the rest of the ladies. She can't go to church. She can't go shopping. Oh, because she's got this issue. And at any given moment, she would gush forth and become embarrassing. Bleed so much, almost bleed to death. Everything in her little house was stained red. It had a stench. Amen. Oh, my God. But the Bible said when she heard that Jesus was what? A moving. He's a passing by. She said, oh, but if I can but touch him, the hill on his garment. You know what she said? I'm going to move on out there. They might stop me to death. They might try to kill me. They might reject me. But if I can touch his garment. Expecting a good hard day's work, right? That's right. That's right. So it means you probably got to really get into it, right? Uh -huh. Huh? Okay. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus expects us to get into it. Right. 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 Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. That last day of God. Lazy. Oh. My God. Bipolar kind of prayer. Hot one minute, cold the next oh. time. In one minute, out the next time. Happy one minute, mad the next. Come on. I want to tell you, God wants to deliver you from all that stuff. I'm telling you, I know. I know that I know we need to be radical in our love for Jesus. We need to be radical in our love for Jesus and move out of our comfort zone. Yes, sir. Glory to God. There's things we see when the Lord's moving. I, I told some of them men before about that fella. We had one of them just tear down on services. T got up there and got a little, it was a keyboard, it was a hammer, like an organ. And uh, don't, don't get mad at me here. <laughs> but you really find out just how white you are when the, that Hammond B3 kicks out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had one of them old beacons in that church. Man, I was a feeling. It was that woman needing a miracle for her daughter. Jesus said, what do I got to do with you? 
the children's bread is not for the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. But even the dogs gets the scraps of the fragments that falls from the master's table. Holy Ghost, give me a message entitled Scraps Fit for a King. And I just feel it was when it's Sunday morning. It was in Sunday morning you know, to start your service. You, know? you got to really be buttoned up on them Sunday mornings. Glory to God. But it was just one of them kind. You know why? Because I thought the, I think the Lord walked in there and started really looking and examining that tree and to see if it's yeah. anything really on it. So my God, I got to just foaming at the mouth of preaching. She got on it. <laughs> All that stuff, uh, oh my God, going out the door when, when him D comes, uh, amen, he had his poor little sweet wife by the hand just jerking oh. like that. He stopped in front of me, he said, let me tell you one thing. I said, okay, <laughs> yeah, and I'm on my back's against the wall, so I can't, uh, I ain't Jesus, I can't walk through the wall here. He said, I just want to let you know, me, her, nor our money will ever be back in this church. So I said, <laughs> Because I ain't going to tell you the, the rest of the story. Y'all yeah. will call me racist. Yeah. Amen. But in comparison, one in the church. I said, hey, brother, what you got to do, you got to do. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Come on. In fact, I wanted to tell him what Jesus told G Judas. What thou doest, do quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's right the truck. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> tell me at the line. That line devil done told me he's gonna star me out of John's world. Come on. Come on. He was the biggest time pair, but you know what? That's what the secretary said. I said, I don't know. I said, the gospel don't differate for nobody. Come on. It was a Sunday, Monday morning. I was afraid, oh God, because I don't want to be offensive. I just, I just believe the gospel. Is that all right? Just believe the gospel. I'm gonna pray. I feel old Slewfoot when he come into church. I said, oh God, I hope it ain't that 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 brother got him a chop for that. So I'm gonna come back to him, huh? But it wasn't even spiritual. That old hair. I didn't know. I didn't say up here. I just said my hair stood up. Really. And that old voice got down in my ear and he said, I told you I'm going to starve you out of Jonesboro. I said, You get thee behind me, you stupid yes. devil. Yes. Right. Man, I give him a voice for He went out that church. It's a spirit, okay? Yeah. Y'all trying to figure out who, who, who it's a spirit. Yeah. There's an air vents. In that old building we had Jones where had the big round circular air vents with the, like three things. I call them squigglers. I just know what they were. And that one right right, right there over at Brother Wayne. Good thing they went. Ain't one up there, brother. Because I want to tell you, that baby failed. Boom. She rock or that old insulation fell all over the floor. So Okay. I mean, I, I, me and the guys just put that right back up. I mean, you, you know, it's like, I mean, like what, what's that about? Yeah. Now I got to preach on adultery. Come on. Right. I did not know to the old boy that was like my right arm. Amen. Was running around. Oh my, because I, I done got so close, I couldn't see. That's why Jesus always examined it from a distance. And then he got closer. Come on, sir. Oh my. And man, they quit the church. Ah, we went over there, me and T went over there. What's the problem? We won't tell you what the problem. They unrolled a piece of paper like a scroll. Ain't that much wrote down on it. And I'm like, oh my God. Well, listen, I said, man, ain't that something? An adulterer gonna write notes about me. Come on. Hey, didn't know it at the time. But that was the second biggest time too. God fixed to send us a revival. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I don't know. That's what my elder secretary would tell me. I said, don't worry about it, elder. You just keep them books. You know, whatever pennies had, that's all. You don't want to use that. That's okay. I don't have to know this or know that. I just want to know Jesus. Come on. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Man, I want to tell you, we moved out. We moved out. And every time a family left, two more families would come in. Yeah. Glory to God. Got my young people. I want to tell you, friend, an old wind would begin to blow across there. Yeah. And we saw folks that never, not one time, they ever showed any on 
emotion and I'm not free. Listen, uh, you do what you gotta do. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, all of a sudden, the, the power of God would fall upon them. They begin to weep and cry, glory to God. I told you before about that young man went up there and faced that big giant that painting shook all the way to his socks and broke one out the church. Scared to death. Went out there and knocked on his window. He's a bawling out there. Brother Alice knocked on his window. I said, get out there and come talk to me. We stand out there on the ground with an old parking lot in Jonesboro. That boy got food and got, got born again right there on that parking lot. Mother and father all said, oh, that's it. Preacher going to run him off. Amen. He come busting out through the, the church screaming, I'm saved. I'm saved. I want to take it to him. service not that long ago. We, they were singing that song, You Gotta Move. Yeah. Yeah. You Gotta Move. Uh -huh. <laughs> Boy, I was singing, I was singing. <laughs> Glory to God. We gotta move. Yeah. And some folks are like, what happened? It's crazy. We are. We're crazy for Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah. What a man's passionate for. When I say man, I mean man. What a man's passionate for. You don't have to guess. That, that man right there loves Jesus. But he also loves him some fish. Yeah. He's telling me a story a while ago. Uh -huh. About falling in a boat. Hung a big. Slipped. <laughs> fell backwards on a battery. Oh, in his my. back. Paralyzed almost. But didn't let go of the boat. Uh -huh. He ended up landing how much? Five pounds of one. Five pound fish. I said, oh, my little broke back. Praise God, I got that fish. Amen. I will be dedicated. Come on. Anything I do, I'm going to be dedicated to it. You ain't got to call me Christ. That you really love, you're passionate for. Yes. And you show yes. affection too. Yes. I love that woman on it. I gotta quit making fun of her cooking. Yes. I do. God convicted me of that. You know, sometimes we can fool, fool around and pick too much. I, I, I'm guilty. I'm just I'm guilty. But I tell you, I would trade the world for all the silver and gold. We asked each other just a while ago, getting ready for church. She said, You can love me always. I said, if you love me always, come on. Come on, come on. I think she's all, all sparked up because we're going next week to see the green. Oh, yeah. 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 But you got to move. Yeah. He's always moved. He moved six days at the very beginning. Seventh day, took one day to rest. Yeah. Then he started moving again. Yeah. Come on. He moved all the way through the prophets of the Old Testament to right at the very end. It went 400 years of darkness or silence yeah. between Matthew, Malachi and Matthew. Yeah. And then he began to move again. Yeah. And while his, his people was moving out there baptizing, all of a sudden John the Baptist looked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Yeah. He's a man. Yeah. He moved from the infant child He's eight years old. He's a moving into them temples and teaching them doctors and lawyers. I'm going to get it all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I told him tonight. I showed him. I said, I'll show you my notes. You start preaching on. I ain't got no notes. I said, so I get it tonight. You know, it's the Holy Ghost. Come on. Uh, I said, eight years old. Mom and daddy loses him. Now they got to move. They're moving in fear and panic. They find him, but they can't help him. He rebukes them when they get there. She's all about all the girl. Fuss and all that. What? Don't you know I should be about my father's business? What you, what you going to say to that? <laughs> but then he began to move. And for years, he's kind of flying under the radar. But he's a building and stuff. Man, don't you know he was a fine carpenter? Oh, my Lord. Uh, by, by, by that time, I don't know exactly when, but Joseph must have passed away because there's no more historical records of Joseph there. 
Don't you know anything he touched? Man, don't you know he makes some beautiful stuff? Man. You know he made beautiful stuff. Look around. Because you are his workmanship. Yes, sir. Moving right in this little church. Yeah. Hey, it's a little church, but some big folks here tonight. Yeah. Big in their love for Jesus. Yeah. And man, that he you're exactly what he's looking for. He's examining you now. And if you're lacking something, if you're lacking something, ask. You have not because you ask not. Right? We're gonna pray. We're going to believe God. But when you, when, you, when you pray something, if you're not serious, don't raise your hand. But if you're serious, to say, God, I want to move. Not only do I want to be moved by you, but I want to move with you. Yeah. Yeah. We lift your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Let's find an altar and pray.